This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can we clap our hands this morning and give God praise? The Bible is clear from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. We are so grateful this morning that God has allowed us to be in this space at this time. And I know that we already did it, but I just think, I just think we ought to clap our hands like, like I mean, clap it like you're excited and give God praise this morning for life, health, and strength. Listen, I want us to begin our, our worship service this morning. I am excited about these three services of doing our religious emphasis program. Um, thank you so much to those who will participate this evening and tomorrow night. I believe that Jarvis is the perfect place because we educate the head, the heart, and the hand. And so I'm excited about us being in this space today. I'm also excited about our guests that I'm going to introduce here in just a few minutes. But this is Black History Month, and we will begin our worship this morning as we have. We're going to ask at this time that our choir director will come and lead us as we sing together. So let us all stand as we sing together, lift every voice and sing. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not talk during this. Let us sing, lift every voice. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven. You may have your seats in the presence of our God.
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask at this time that you please indulge us as I make this announcement. This is important. I know that some of you are looking for programs. Uh, we had a malfunction of the, in the reproduction center this morning. Literally, the printer just, just copy or just stopped working. So uh, please know that um, other than that, we, will, we, were, we were intending to have um, the programs ready for us. But I would like for us to at this time prepare our hearts for prayer. Um, I want us to pray for some people, and then I'm going to invite, I want, us to, I want to name some persons who need our prayer, and then I want to invite Ms. Jabranda Burnett to come and lead us in prayer, after which Mr. Javier Law will come and render a song. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, would you please pray for the Johnson family? The Johnson family is in Dallas, Texas. Um, their son, one of the sons, 27 years old, was found dead the other day. Um, no explanation. They don't know what happened, but they're scheduled to funeralize him uh, this Saturday. I will take this time as we ask you to pray for them for us to be reminded. Life is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. So I would encourage us to love those that we love. In fact, make love a priority so that we make memories rather than having regrets. Would you also likewise pray for the family of Reverend Jim Rollins, who's a longtime um, disciple of Christ minister in the East Texas area. He passed away and his funeral was yesterday. I would also ask that you would pray. I have a number of persons within this community that I cannot name their names. I do not have their permission, but there are persons in this community that are going through all manner of challenges. And I would ask us at this time that we would bow our heads and begin and prepare our hearts to pray would you please welcome now Mr. Brenda Burnett as she comes to lead us in prayer. Hi guys, I'm Jabranda Burnett and I hope y'all are all having a great day today. Um, let us bow our heads so that we can receive this prayer. Father God, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you for this day, God. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. Thank you for breathing your air into our lungs, Father, so that we can wake up and see another day and that can, we, we can retry. We can, we can have new hope today, Father God. I thank you for everything that you have done for us throughout our life, Father God. I thank you for giving us everything that you have given us throughout all the trials and tribulations, Father God. You let us know that you are with us, Father God. I pray that your Holy Spirit reaches everybody in this room and they fill their bodies, God, so that they know that you are with them and that, you are that they are loved by you no matter what, Father. Let them know that you are with them, Father, throughout everything and anything that goes on in their life, Father God. So, with that being said, you guys are all loved by our Father. We all make mistakes. At the end of the day, God still loves us, Father. Father, God loves us. And I pray that we all are just filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, when we leave this place. And that you all have an encounter with the Holy Spirit at least one time in your life. So that we can all know the love and the joy of the Holy Spirit. And that you know what Jesus Christ has done for you guys. In the name of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
me try that again. <laughs> Soon as I stopped worrying, worrying how the story I let go and I let God. Let God have His way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking back then. I let go and I let God. Let God have His way. Couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind. I was searching for that peace. Peace I could not find. And then I kneeled down to pray. I'm praying, help me, please. He said, you don't have to cry, because I'll supply all your needs. As soon as I stopped worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening I stop looking and back then I let go and I let God let God have his way there's so much going on sometimes I can't find my way and oftentimes I struggle, struggle from day to day. I have to realize it's not my battle, it's not my battle to fight. I have to put it in your hands, and everything will be all right. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story is, I let go and I let God, I let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking at back then. I let go and I let God. I let God have his way. Let go and let God. 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 Say, let go. Say, let go and let God, let go of fear and let God, let go of shame and let God, let go of doubt and let God, let go of fear and let God, oh, let, let go and let God, say, let God. No matter what's going on, you gotta stay strong. Oh, let go, hey, let God. Oh, let go, hey, let God. Because He cares for you and He loves you and He wants to see you win. He wants to see you win. You better let go, hey, let God. Oh, let go. God. As soon as I stopped worrying, worrying, worrying how the story is, I, I let go and I let God. Only you can do let for God me. have it. That's when, it That's when things start happening. I never look back. I no more. stop looking. 
go and I let God let God have his way. What a powerful message to somebody who may be struggling with something to let go and let God have his way. We want to move forward with our worship experience. But I want to make sure that we give this incredible preacher time to share the word of God with us today. I want us to do our black history moment. Um, we're going to do a video again today. Um, I ask that you will please direct your attention to the screen at this time. Amen. Let me make one observation in honor of Black History Month. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been engaged in a program to get people registered and get people to the polls. I believe today is the first day. Um, of, say it again, Jave. First day of regular voting. And so I want to encourage everybody, make sure that we go to the polls. Um, without belaboring the time much, if we don't vote, we lose our voice. When we don't vote, we lose our power. And I shudder to think, Dr. Pruitt, about all of those people who sat in, who marched, who had dogs turned on, water hoses. Remember again, my grandfather, who died at 102 years old, who wished to God that most of his life he could have voted. Please, ladies and gentlemen, go out to the polls and vote. It does not matter to me, well, it does matter, but it is up to you for whom you vote, but just make sure that you cast your vote. Likewise, let me make a couple of announcements. Um, I'm going to, in the interest of time today, if you will please just allow me to place the announcements in an email later. Uh, today, there was a number of them. There were like 15 announcements, and I don't want to belabor the time today to make all of those announcements. But tomorrow, this evening at 7 p.m., we will continue with these services of worship and religious emphasis. And I'm excited that this young man that's sitting on the front row, if he'll stand for just a moment, the Reverend Eric Anthony Brown from the New Jerusalem Baptist Church will be our preacher for this evening. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, he ugly, but he can preach. 
No, I'm just, I'm just messing. Yeah, I'm just messing. That's one of my best friends in the world, so I, I'm clowning him. But listen, I promise you, if you will engage in these services, we'll be better because of it. I can assure you of that. And so, also, I'd like to announce that next Tuesday will be our official Black History program for the university. And the Reverend Rodney Atkins, is Reverend Atkins in here? The Reverend, stand up, Reverend Atkins. The Reverend Rodney Atkins will be our preacher for next week. Oh, y'all ought to give it up more for that. That's the bishop right there. We listen. Praise God for that. So, so we're looking forward to that. Um, also, I was asked to do something. I'm going to do it real quick. Is Corey Gibson in here? Or is he out, outside taking care of stuff? That's okay. If he, even if he don't come in. When you see Corey Gibson, make sure you say happy birthday to Corey Gibson. Because I was told that co today is Corey Gibson's birthday. And I want to make sure that we celebrate him for everything that he does around here for everybody. And we thank God for that. All right. I want to do this. I want to introduce our speaker now for this morning. And then after which the choir is going to come and sing. Um, I've, I've, I'm really excited. I met Dr. Daniel L. Brown at one of them conferences. I don't even remember which one now. You know, Dr. Pruitt, you will acknowledge that there are some persons, you meet them and they're at a certain level and they just standoffish. They won't hardly speak to you. That ain't Dr. Daniel L. Brown. That is not her at all. Walked up to her and shook, shook her hand. She said, hey, how you doing? And she was it's just as kind as if we've been knowing each other forever. I asked her for a number. I wanted to get her here to Jarvis, and she gave me a number. It surprised me. She gave me her number, because oftentimes what they do is they give you the number of the assistant, you know. She gave me the number. Then I text her, and she said, hey, how you doing? I said, I know she don't have a clue who I am, but that's just who she is. But above that, that's her personality. But let me tell you something about this young lady. She, in 2021, was elected as the 10th senior pastor of the Shallow Baptist Church in Plano, New Jersey, the first woman to hold this position since the church's founding in 1908. <laughs> but likewise, Dr. Brown is a scholar. She's an absolute scholar. She serves as site supervisor in Princeton Theological Seminary, New Brunswick Theological Seminary, and Pillar College Field Education Program, as well as she's taught in the faculty of New York Theological Seminary, served two board, two terms on the board of trustees of New Brunswick Theological Seminary. I could keep on going and going on, but she has an earned doctorate of ministry. She serves on the board at, at Cynthia Hale's conference, Women of Ministry Conference. She serves along with uh, Pastor Brian Carter with the E.K. Bailey Conference with IC3 down in Houston with the Hampton Ministers Institute in Virginia. Listen, this is one of God's choicest vessels. And Jarvis Christian University is excited to have her with us. But I can't let sit down, Dr. Pruitt, before I say one more thing. She is a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And so after the choir comes and sings this brief song, I would ask that you would please welcome for the first time at Jarvis Christian University, the Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown. Before we get started, can we please give Mr. Kimball a hand for doing this praise and for praise and for us? Amen. 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 Amen.
is over now. It's over now. I feel like I can make it. The storm is over now.
of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in, and it's there that we find salvation and safety. Is anybody just glad to be in chapel uh, today? That is good. I leaned over uh, to Dr. Dinkins, and I said, when I get back to New Jersey, I'm going to tell the people that I found Casey, JoJo, Brian McKnight at chapel at Jarvis. Can y'all just celebrate these amazing students who have led us? in music. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to stand in this space. I'm glad to be here. We give honor to our president, my soror, Dr. Pruitt. Let's celebrate her. <laughs> Dr. Hester, Dr. Kariuki, Dr. AK, Dr. Richardson, all of our vice presidents, all of the faculty and staff, uh, my preaching partner, on this week, the Reverend Eric Anthony Brown, and I see Mr. Mr. and Miss Jarvis College. Come on, let's just celebrate everybody. Matter of fact, if you don't mind, just turn to the person next to you and say, thank you for coming today. Uh, just turn to them. And I've been in, in church a long time, and I know that people can get sensitive. So while you're at it, turn to the other side and say, thank you for sitting by me. Thank you for sitting by me. Because if you hadn't sat here, I don't know who would have, and I might not be enjoying them as much as I'm enjoying you. Can you just celebrate the person who is sitting next to you? And we certainly thank God for your director of religious life, Dr. Cedric Dinkins. Uh, we appreciate him uh, so much. What a, a personality. He stood up here and called his good friend ugly. Right at the, you're going to have a time later when you get with your friend. But if you uh, have your Bibles in whatever form they're in, I want to invite you to meet me in Acts, the 28th chapter. And I'm going to read in your hearing verses 7 through 10. Uh, the word of the Lord uh, reads this way. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went in to him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and he healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. They also honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Throughout the book of Acts, we find evidence of God's power working through people. The Spirit falls early in Acts, and for the first time ever, uh, there is the Spirit of God now dwelling on the inside within God's people. The Holy Spirit, which activates spiritual gifts and empowers the disciples and new believers to do what is necessary for the growth and expansion of the early church, is now dwelling on the inside, friends. This included the working of miracles, of healing and deliverance, and just a basic holding on to this new faith despite the odds that were all around them. I want you to be clear and be very sure that we often romanticize the progress of the early church, but this was not an easy feat. The world around them was hostile for it toward Jesus. In fact, they just killed him. Yeah, uh, Jesus' death occurred as a partnership between the religious powers of that time and the state. And I want to let you know that church and government have a way of getting together to do some wild things if we let ourselves go unchecked. And now the disciples are carrying on the work of Jesus and they are continuing to challenge the status quo. They're continuing to disrupt world systems and methods that cause God's people to live outside of God's will concerning them. The 
context around them was not ideal. Their humanity and the ways that being human can limit all of us also were not ideal. Uh, they had access, though, to something. They had access to something that could override both context and conditions. You want to know what that is? Wave your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care if you want to know what that is. Well, that is the spirit of the living God working in and ultimately through them. That's not just good news for the historical figures in Acts, but it's good news for us today. See, the tragedy of God's power is not that it is not available to us, but it's that we are not always available to be used by it. The beloved, there is a power that is available to all of us. Uh, it is God's power, a power that overrides the odds, a power that transforms culture and circumstances, a power that can do what no other power can do. But in order for it to work, some of us have got to commit to being good stewards of it. And in our text today, on the heels of shipwreck on the island of Malta, while en route to Rome, there's something that happens that is seemingly insignificant. It's seemingly insignificant, but Reverend Brown, I believe it speaks to the impact of how we allow God's power to work through us. Uh, Paul and company spent the night at sea being tossed and battered by a, a storm, a storm that caused the seas to rage, a storm that ultimately destroys their ship, they end up on the island of Malta. And thankfully, the natives there extend hospitality to them. Y'all don't mind if I tell the story a little bit, and I promise I'll get you out of here so you can get to class. Uh, but, but it was there that while warming by fire, Paul is bitten by a certain, but what Paul didn't just swell up and die, and the people, because he survived, begin to think that he is a god. But it's also there in Malta, there was a leader, a man by the name of Publius and probably connected to Paul's survival of the snake bite and the positive impression of those who first encountered him, uh, he had access to Publius uh, uh, hospitality. See, Publius received them and entertained them for three days, but here's what happens. His father was sick. He has fever and dysentery. That's what the word says, but that is not an uncommon illness. How many of you have ever had a fever. Uh, this might seem a little uncouth, but how many of you have ever had what we would call the bubbly guts? Come on, young people uh, in the room. You've had it. We've all had it. In fact, our grandparents uh, would simply slip some Vicks vapor rub and some crackers and hand us a ginger ale to help us through. But Paul decides to go into him. Paul goes to him and prays and lays hands on him and heals him. And I want to stop there and say that a good steward of God's power working in you means that you cannot be disabled by disruptions. What am I saying? I'm saying that Paul and company were en route to Rome. They had plans. Uh, they had an agenda. Uh, but a storm disrupts them, and they end up on Malta. In this life, you will have plans. Your plans will not always go as smoothly as you imagined or as you wrote down. For every good plan, there is an island of Malta just waiting for us. And in every Malta will have its own set of experiences and issues. But you You've got to know that whether you land in Rome or you've got to detour through Malta, you are still you. Uh, your assignment remains the same. Your mission is still intact. And guess what else? Your God is still the same. And some of the problem with the ways that we allow God's power to work through us or do not allow God's power to work through us is that we get so thrown off by disruptions that we close ourselves off to God's desire to use us. But be clear, there is no ideal time and there is no ideal place for God God's power to work in you and there should be no place or circumstance that is beneath you. Your anointing and your gift and your call and your mandate to do justice and to love mercy are not contingent upon where you are. You should never be so grand that you decide to withhold it. What am I saying? If God allows you to land somewhere, it must mean that God wants to use you there. Hear me out. 
if we're going to be mature stewards of God's power and if we are going to allow God's power to work through us, we can't be disabled by disruptions. But if we're going to be uh, good stewards of God's power working through us, then we've got to also be willing to work while we're waiting. Here we go. Paul hears that uh, Publius' dad is sick, and he goes into him and lays hands and heals him. Friends, Paul is waiting for a new ship so he can get to his original destination, which is Rome. And even in the time of waiting, he does not uh, uh, withhold his willingness to be used by God. Some of us are waiting for Rome and neglecting to allow God to use us right where we are. But if God's power is going to really work through us, we've got to have a mindset that says it does not matter where I am. If I see something that God can help, I'm not going to wait for it to come to me. I'm going to go on into it. Are you willing to function even when the location is not what you are preparing for? Are you willing to be used even when the circumstances appear so insurmountable? I know that we've been dealing with racism for generations. I know that we've been dealing with sexism for generations. I know that the political process and structure is all jacked up and it's been that way for generations. But are you going to allow the silence Size and scope of the issue to disable you? Are you going to run into it and do what you got to do because you know that God's power can work through you? But here is uh, the question, can you work here while you wait to get there? But here's another point. God's power through us means a willingness to serve everybody and anybody. Uh, Publius father was likely not a Christian. I want to paint this picture for those of us who are so exclusive that we think that God only loves Christians. Uh, Y'all stick with me. For those of us who think that God only loves people who look like us and believe like us and think like us and like what we like and do what we say do, understand he was not someone that the text ever tells us converted to this faith. He was not Paul's close friend or a student. He was, in fact, a stranger, someone who only entered his world when he landed on Malta. Yet Paul does not withhold from him the possibility of healing. Are y'all still with me? Don't, don't give up. Don't give up on me. Uh, friends, uh, God's power working through us means that we function even though we don't get to choose who. We don't get to choose who is on the receiving end of our work. Uh, it's not just for those who believe like us or who think like us. Christian faith and the power of God is not exclusive to one group of people. And we've got to stop with religious turf wars and groups of people because we are all created in the image of God. And maturity informs us that the same God who has healed me wants to heal them the same God who wants to, who has delivered me wants to deliver them the same God who saved my life has the capacity to save theirs too and so I cannot on account of my privileges withhold the love of God and the power of God from anybody else. Understand that we love Dr. King and Dr. King's work. When they took him out, uh, it was not just working against racism, but Dr. King was there at a rally for sanitation workers, black and white and yellow and all colors because what's right is right and we don't get to determine who gets to be on the receiving end of God's power working through us. Mature stewardship of God's power means we can't be disabled by disruptions. We've got to be willing to work while we're waiting and we can't pick and choose who receives. And, and then we've got to understand this, that even the mundane can yield a major impact. Uh, fever, dysentery, they're common mundane things. We already said that. Y'all already know that. But when Paul goes in and lays hands and heals uh, Publius' father of a mundane, very common sickness. 
the rest of the people on the island who were dealing with diseases, likely some major situations and some others more mundane situations, but the text tells us that they all came and they too were healed. What am I saying? Can you just tap your neighbor uh, on the shoulder? You know you brought a black Baptist preacher uh, in here. Uh, so, so just tap your neighbor. If you don't want to tap them, just elbow them. If you don't want to touch them, just stare them in the face until they feel you staring and they got to look at you. But, but understand this. Uh, uh, when we allow God to use us for the mundane, the common, the not so noticeable, the not so much a big deal things, it can result in in the healing of a whole community. Uh, see, we want to be seen and we want to be on main stage. We want to get all of the attention and recognition for what we have done. But the reality is that God's power working through us causes us to understand that there is no scaling of opportunities when it comes to where we apply this power. See, Publish Father had a common illness that was enough to heal and in turn cause others to come. And so, beloveds, what are you overlooking as insignificant? What mundane thing is God trying to get you to pay attention to so that you can have a broader impact on the world around you? Because now is a good time for you to put your power to use. Now is a great time to go to those places and go to those people and allow the power of God to work through you. Do do you know that you are more powerful than you think that you are? Uh, you are more powerful. Your voice is more powerful than you think it is. And you may not sit in high places, but little things on low places can build up and cause the whole world uh, to live uh, in a much better way. See, here's what happens. Every time you allow the power of God to work in and through you, favor has a way of finding you. If Abraham has a way of finding you, seriously, that once the people were healed, the text tells us that they honored them in many ways. And then when they departed, it was the people in a foreign place. It was the people uh, that they had just met. It was these folks who provided what they needed for the journey. It was these folks who provided what they lost in the storm. Uh, are y'all ready to get out of here, Jarvis? Are you ready? Because I know you got things to do. Uh, the cafeteria is probably waiting. I'm in Texas. I want to get some brisk, some, uh, can I get barbecue fish? Oh yeah, something like that. Uh, but, but I believe that Jesus is the way. And I believe that there's but one way to God and that's through his son Jesus. I also believe that we are all created in God's image and we've got to release exclusivism because when it comes to being stewards of God's power, we can't wait for people to do what we have done. We can't wait for people to go where we have gone, but we've got to understand that it doesn't matter if they don't know the church lingo like we know church lingo. It doesn't matter if they've not joined Joined a church like we've joined a church, but we still have to extend God's love and God's power their way because a mature steward of God's power understands that the same way that God has chosen to use you is the same way that God wants to heal and deliver and set them free. See, a mature steward of God's power says anytime and anywhere. It says anyone and I won't withhold because because it's inconvenient. I won't deny because circumstances are not ideal and I won't quit because they are not familiar, but I want to live so that God can use me. No matter where I am, no matter what I'm facing, I want to live in such a way that God can use me to make this world a better place so that God can use little old me and my little voice to change uh, things in the space that I am in because little things they build up and they become major things and so friends we've got to be mature stewards of God's power working through us which means that just today something simple like sitting next to someone in this chapel have you been kind to your neighbor 
Did you smile? Did you take a moment simply to get to know their name? Did you take a moment when the preacher said, tap your neighbor and say, thank you for coming? Do you know that even those small things can transform somebody's life? That when the chapel speaker said, celebrate the person just for sitting next to you. Do you know how many people go through life and nobody ever celebrates the fact that they showed up? But when we come into spaces like this, Jarvis Christian University, if nobody celebrates your presence, it's in places like this that our presence should be celebrated. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It does not matter what your denominational background is. It does not matter any of those specifics. Here's what matters. We're all created in God's image. And wherever I see someone created in God's image, I will live so that God can use me. I'm going to show the love of God. I'm going to do the small things because the small things lead to major things. Can you just slip your hands toward heaven and just say this, anointing, fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. Let the power of the Spirit of God fall on me. Can you just say this with me? God, use me to do the simple things. Because if I do the simple things and my neighbor does the simple things, together we do great things. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads about eyes closed. Please don't leave, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, you can, if you are outside and you got the scanners, do not scan anybody out until we, after we've given the benediction. You're not to leave at this time. We, the cafeteria is going to be there. We're going to make sure you eat. Amen. Amen. I'm looking at my president. If I'm out of order, I'll receive a reprimand. But I, I think we must learn, ladies and gentlemen, what we must do, okay? Give God praise for this preaching. I do want to pray right quick because I think this is an important word. Because somebody in here, heads about, eyes are closed very quickly. Somebody in here, you may feel like you're insignificant. Dr. Brown just told us little things. When we let, let God's power flow through us, they mount up to become major things. So I just want to pray with us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Would you bless us to this extent? Not that you give us a gift, you've already done that. Not that you give us power, you've already done that. But would you give us the courage to stand up and use the voice you gave us, to extend our hands to do the things you've equipped them to do. May we see, even in a small place, that what we're doing will have a major impact. In Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed said, amen. All right, just, just before we get ready to go, I do know it's lunchtime. I do want to announce uh, something that is of critical importance. Number one, this evening, we're looking forward to seeing everybody back here this evening at 7 p.m. The Reverend Eric Anthony Brown is going to be our preacher for this evening. We're looking forward to hearing a word from God from him. But likewise, let me announce the QEP kickoff. Career Readiness Day. The SSS staff will host Career Readiness Day February 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Meyer Auditorium. Please dress in your professional business attire and be prepared to take a professional headshot. All JCU students are expected to participate in this event. Please note that the closing closet located in the Meyer building is available if you need business attire for this event. And I want to go one step further. Young men, if you don't know how to tie a tie, um, I want to ask you to please see one of three persons. See me, see Dr. McMillan, 
And if you're a bow tie wearer, I'm volunteering him. I know this is my boss, but Dr. Andre Richardson will teach you how to tie a tie. We want to make sure that we look good for this. So let's make, our, make ready for that on February the 22nd. At this time, I want to ask that Dr. Lee would come and, and play our, our prelude, our postlude rather, at this time, and then we'll sing our alma mater together. Let us stand and sing together our alma mater.
As we prepare to go, please, students, make sure that you stop and scan out. Please note this. L listen, before you move, ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Hold on. You, I promise y'all, listen, 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 listen. I promise y'all I don't mean to just keep fussing at us, but it is important as we live life that we learn decorum and order. Amen? Yes, so, so here's what I'm asking you to do. As you go out, please scan out. We're in the chapel at 1207, so for those who left before that, just know that they will be marked absent. Those of you who have missed chapel and you've earned fines, please make sure you check your email. Those went out this morning. Um, please be back here this evening at 7 o'clock. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you God's peace in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, your tears, your joys, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of your journey. Amen.